Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. I'm in my shop in Montana here on a cold January day. But one of the things I'm doing is getting ready for my Arizona hunting applications. I'm dreaming about another really nice Arizona bull like you see here. And Arizona is the place of elk hunters dreams. But if you wanna go and hunt all kinds of cool species, all kinds of neat places, we're gonna show you how you can do that in Arizona. We're gonna walk you through how the system works, then I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I use, and then I'm gonna to explain to you the whole host of other opportunities that are out there in Arizona of all these other really, really cool species. Arizona Game and Fish publishes regulations for the elk and antelope draw. They have a different set of regulations for the deer and bighorn sheep draw, and then they have a different set of regulations for turkey, javelina, bear, and bison. But the important part is their draw works the same for every species. And I'm gonna try walk you through this and we're gonna throw up a few examples on the screen that maybe uh, gives you some clarity about how it works. One of the fundamental things you need to understand is Arizona is a bonus point state. Bonus point systems are more like a lottery raffle type thing. If you have six raffle tags and I only have one raffle tag uh, ticket, you have six times better odds than I do. That's what a bonus point system is. The first thing you need to do for Arizona is you have to buy your non-resident hunting license. It's a one-time investment that you have to make every year. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a whole list of things that you can go and do in Arizona that are gonna get you a huge return on that investment in your non-resident license. For this example, I'm gonna say that the unit we're talking about has 100 tags total. And I'm gonna talk about how those 100 tags get split and how they get allocated to everybody who applies. And there's some different rules. Non-residents are restricted to no more than or up to 10% of any hunt code. So in this example I'm gonna use, we say this hunt has 100 elk tags. Well, that means non-residents can get no more than 10 of those or 10% of 100 is, is 10 tags. So they take 20% of, of the tags by hunt code. And so in this example where there's 100 tags, they take 20 of those tags and they put them in the first draw. And the first draw they call the bonus pass. And the top 20 point holders get those tags. And there's one caveat. That being that no more than 5% of the non-resident quota, in other words, five of the 10 non-resident tags that are allowed, no more than five of those, or 5%, can go in this bonus pass round. So now, we, we've given away the 20 tags over here in the bonus pass. That means we've got a whole bunch of other people at lower point totals who didn't get a tag. All of you are gonna go over to the one, two pass. Now the one, two pass is for the remaining 80 tags. And in this pass, it's a true bonus point system. So like I said, if I have one point and you have six points, your odds of drawing in this one, two pass are six times greater than my odds because I have one point, you have six. So you get assigned six random numbers, I get assigned one. That's how this, this remaining 80% of the tags is allocated. So bonus pass, the first 20% of the tags, one, two pass, the other 80% of the tags. All of us, have a chance of some sort to draw in Arizona. It's just because of how the allocation works. Yeah, if you're just new to the system, your odds are less, but if you stay in the system, your odds are gonna get better and better and better. Arizona has another unique thing to their system that they have a what's called a loyalty point program. If you've been applying for a species for five years in a row, they give you a permanent bonus point for that species. So I've been applying for Arizona elk, deer, antelope, sheep. I've been applying for everything since 1995, 96. I have a loyalty point for every one of those species. The downside of that is if you miss a year, you go back to zero. You got to build up your five years again before you can get your loyalty point. Arizona also has another option where you can get a permanent point. You go there and you take their hunter education class. So now for every species, I also have the hunter education point. So as a non-resident, I've got two permanent points, my hunter education point and my loyalty point. 
And as long as I continue to apply in Arizona every year, I'll never lose the Hunter Ed point, but I will never lose the loyalty point as long as I continue to apply there. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to my office and I'm gonna show you some of the tools I use to kinda give you a little bit of a tip, uh, uh, an idea of things that, that you can use to maybe increase your likelihood of drawing an Arizona tag or developing a strategy for how you can someday draw that dream tag that you want. There's three main tools that I use when I'm doing this. And I spend hours doing this. And part of that is I have a TV show. I got to get 10 to 12 tags a year. So I got to almost make a science out of this. I got to be efficient with my time. I'm going to show you a couple tips of, of what can help you with it. The very first thing I have on this screen over here is the 2017 Pronghorn Antelope and Elk Hunt Draw Information from Arizona Game and Fish. This has everything that, uh, if I have a question, I want to go and get it from the source. Never, ever uh, go on assumption. Always refer to the regulations. And then over here, I've got two really good resources. They're resources that have pretty much brought all of my uh, mountains of information to two, two points of focus. One is this company called Go Hunt. I've been using their stuff for two years now. And the other is the Onyx Maps. Um, I have them up here on the screen when I'm doing my research. The Onyx Maps tells me what the land ownership patterns are, water sources, just everything you can think of. And then over here, the, the Go Hunt system has uh, if you go to GoHunt.com, it's got tons of good information, but specific to Arizona, uh, I subscribe to their insider system. And with their insider system, I click on Arizona, and it gives me a map of the state, it gives me every species, and I'm going to click on elk. So it gives me all the elk units. And then I can sort the elk units by draw odds of resident or non-resident. I can say I want archery season, rifle season. Uh, I can sort it by uh, harvest success. Um, I can sort it by, you know, possible pro trophy potential if that's something that interests you. I would suggest you go to the Arizona Rags or if you want to, uh, this Go Hunt service uh, just brings all of the information you need to one great gathering point. By having all this in one spot, by having the regulations here, and then having my map system from Onyx Maps, I bring all that together, and there's pretty much anything I want to know about my odds of drawing a tag, how the system works, the access and the land ownership and the area I'm interested in. With these three pieces, it's all there. And if you want to, uh, this Go Hunt Insider System, if you use promo code Randy, R-A-N-D-Y, um, when you sign up, use that promo code, and you're going to get a $50 Sportsman's Warehouse gift card uh, for signing up. Go Hunt has amazing strategy articles about hunting these over-the-counter units in Arizona. So right here it says, Arizona's top over-the-counter deer hunts for 2016. Yeah, you got, you got to use a, a bow, but the amount of opportunity is incredible. Now that I've showed you all the software and all the other resources I use to research Arizona, to kind of get the highlights of how Arizona works, now I want to talk to you about what you can do to go and hunt Arizona, even if you don't draw your dream tag. Say, say you're applying for a really high demand elk tag, you didn't draw it. You've still bought that non-resident license. There is so much opportunity and we've been doing it the last few years. The dove hunting is beyond, it, it's unbelievable. Yuma, Arizona, some of the outlying places of Arizona have the best dove hunting that you can find maybe north of Argentina. We just got back about three weeks ago from Merns quail hunting down on the Mexican border. Unbelievable experience. Tons and tons of public land. Waterfowl hunting. When I was down there quail hunting, I saw some ducks, I shot a duck. Probably the big gem of what, what I'll call non-permit or, or over-the-counter opportunity is the archery deer hunting in Arizona. This winter, I was down in Arizona. Well, it was 22 below here in my home in Montana. I'm in Arizona, 68 degrees, short sleeve weather, chasing coos whitetail. It's over the counter. It doesn't affect my bonus points. Consult the regulations, and, and a lot of them are for the coos whitetail, but a lot of them are also for mule deer. 
Yeah, they're, they're, we're not talking about the Kaibab areas or the Arizona Strip areas, but south of the Grand Canyon, south of what's called the Mogollon Rim, most of those areas are open to this over-the-counter non-permit deer tag. And then you have Havelina. And while I had my over-the-counter deer tag, I also had a Havelina tag. There were leftover archery Havelina tags. And so I thought, well, I may as well go do this. And I did. And it is so fun. When you're looking at the, these hunts that you're applying for, and I don't care if you're talking elk, antelope, deer, whatever, go to the Voluntary Public Access uh, website and you'll see the, the link down below in the video description. But what it is, is Arizona works with participating landowners to keep land open to hunting and to make habitat improvements on their property. Four and a half million acres is open to public hunting that otherwise may be closed or public land that would be inaccessible. Go there and look at which of those units have some of these properties. They're remarkable properties. Arizona puts a lot of emphasis in this and as a result, the properties that are enrolled are high quality hunting opportunities. Point being, if you invest in an Arizona hunting license, make the most of it. Take a winter trip, go south, go and enjoy all this public land and all the opportunity that Arizona has to offer. Arizona Game and Fish does a remarkable job and they are welcoming to you, the non-resident hunter, to come and enjoy all they have to offer. I'll see you there.